Welcome to the Kodak Theater in Hollywood. Just putting the final touches on the stage in preparation for Tuesday night's big showdown between Fantasia Barino and Diana DeGarmo. Now, last season, over 40 million people tuned in to watch Ruben Stutter take the title. And this year, the hype is even greater. Welcome to American Idol, The Phenomenon. So what is American Idol, and why is it such a big deal? Tonight, we're going to take a look at the history of the Idol phenomenon and show you why. Welcome to Pop Idol, the show that's on a mission to find the nation's next musical megastar. Great Britain 2001, and a program hits the airwaves that changes the face of the music industry and reality TV forever. I just don't think we can take you to the next stage. With its mix of emotional drama, appalling singer wannabes, and electrifying possible pop stars, it soon became the hottest show on British television. The format was then sold to territories as far flung as Australia, Canada, Pan Arabic Nation, Belgium, Czech, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Poland, Iceland, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Asia, Europe, 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 Europe. and Turkey. In the United States, the show has become a phenomenon. But why? America's in control. That's the, that's the secret of the phenomenon, if you like. Uh, the fact that the, the public become hooked in, really, to the dreams and aspirations of these kids, and they have the power to make the difference, to make someone who's tossing hamburgers or, or cleaning a window one week, three months later, to be the biggest superstar in America. Anywhere you go, people know what it is. You say it, and everybody knows what you're talking about. Not a lot of things can happen that quickly in three years. A phenomenon is something that grabs um, the population by storm. It's something that um, everybody is mostly aware of. People are um, excited by it. Over the last 10, 15 years, families have sort of disintegrated at home. There's a proliferation of televisions. They're in different rooms of the house. The family can split up. They don't even have to watch television anymore. They can play video games or watch DVDs. I think American Idol brings a family together. Do you think American Idol is a phenomenon? Well, I don't know what phenomenon means, but I love American Idol. When we watch the show, sometimes we're on the phone and we talk Usually about it. Usually we are. Like, hang up, because I need to finish watching American Idol. <laughs> Fantasia's on! I gotta go! <laughs> it got to the point where my recording schedule was based on the schedule for American Idol. And at 7.30, my daughter would start calling, Mommy, are you in the car yet? Are you in the car yet? Not only can they come together, they can disagree happily about things. American Idol is a phenomenon because it is the modern day version of the Lions and the Christians. It's a lot of this and an awful lot of that. That's why you found it difficult to say anything. The American Idol Controversy. American Idol Aftershocks. I'm Bob Goen with the truth about American Idol. American Idol has been plagued by scandal all week. I think a television phenomenon is one that people have got to talk about, a show that people talk about every day, that's on the front of every magazine, uh, all the news stories are talking about it. Our readers love to read about American Idol because it's people just like them, and they feel like they can you know, relate and they can cheer or they can boo or they can do whatever. Will you be quiet? It just gets people really riled up, you know? I mean, it's the kind of competition that... Um, that people just invest themselves in. And they will buy a magazine cover, you know, and they will see an American Idol special, and they might go out and catch the tour. I mean, that's the kind of phenomenon that it is, that it drives people to, to spend their money. And then some. Between them, the Idols have sold over 2 million concert tickets, over 14 million CDs, and generated sales of over $50 million. All this has made the contestants household names and regulars on the talk show circuit. They voted off the guy that everyone's been telling me looks just like me, John Stevens. Even the ones who don't make it, make it big. Talk to me, tell me your side. But it's Simon who has really become a part of pop culture. He sparred with Larry King. Why is this show, Simon, we'll start with you, a hit? Uh, a lot of people say it's just me, but it's... <laughs> oh, yeah, right, of course. It's, it's, of course. It's a team effort, Larry. Fought with Homer Simpson. Jerk! Oh, you call that a punch? And found himself parodied on network TV countless times. Ryan, an Oompa Loompa called, it would like its complexion back. <laughs> Idol the Phenomenon generates big numbers in ratings. Here are a few numbers the Phenomenon is also responsible for. Number of times the judges have had to enjoy a badly sung Whitney Houston song, 1,152. 
Number of production assistants hired to keep Edgar Nova out of the auditions, 240. I just don't want them to follow me like, like I'm walking, like, like, oh, he's a loser. Pounds that Randy has lost this season, 100 plus. States represented it at the season three auditions, 49. North Dakota, what's wrong? Come on out. Number of black t-shirts Simon has worn, 40 and counting. And I think he gets a wardrobe budget. Number of times Randy has called a contestant dog. What's going down, dog? All right, never miss. What's up, dog? Yo, dog. Dog. 25. Number of bottles of product it takes to keep my hair strategically tossed, 15. Ryan is a ton of hair maintenance. It's my full-time job. And last but not least, the number of kisses between Paula and Simon, 438. But only one thought on camera. I think it was he kissed me. Hey, who can blame him? Now stay with us when the judges take us through the auditions from hell. Plus, Kelly and Ruben describe their journey to their own finales when we come back. Over the course of three seasons, we've auditioned over 150,000 people. Now, I know why they go through with it, because they can end up in a place like this. But why exactly do you watch? I mean, you have to admit, it can be kind of uncomfortable. Well, you know, I think a lot of people like seeing the awful singers. You know, that's part of the fun and, you know, but... I don't know, it's, it, it's, it's fun all around for me, so. I knew when I helped create this show that we were going to show just about every aspect of what a performer will do, wants to do, to, to be a star. You could have told me yourself that you love someone else. That's one of the reasons why this show is successful, because it is literally looking through the keyhole. Something in your smile was so exciting. Something in my heart told me that I must have you. OK, can you sing something? <laughs> Another reason why people like watching the audition shows are, like me, they're cruel. It's like shark bait. He can't help it. He starts, like, breathing a little heavy and he starts, like, swallowing and... You want to be a recording artist? Yeah. That's why you need a miracle. It was sort of Columbus, Ohio stage, not Broadway. I don't know the difference. <laughs> uh, well, one's good and one's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> With God on my side, that's all I can ask for. Well, he's taken the day off, sweetheart. Well, I think um, many of us would like to be able to um, say the things Simon does in everyday life. You suck! The problem you have is you have no charisma. It was absolutely awful. How many times have you had a boss you would like to have been able to tell off? The only decent thing about that performance was the end. In normal situations in America, you're not able to be that blunt. I'm not being rude, but that's one of the worst auditions I've ever heard in my life. Oh, my God. <laughs> really, really, really bad. Honestly, Tricia, ghastly. <laughs> Everyone loves a train wreck. I think America loves watching these bad people in the early auditions because that's what it's about. It's a train wreck. You know, people watch NASCAR because they love seeing the, the crash. You don't want to just watch the car go around and around and around. Don't worry, baby. Just call my name. I'll be there in a hurry. Well, just when I thought it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> I think the thing that defines the show for me is that you're watching ordinary people that have not really had much experience in show business put their lives on the line to be judged by their fellows. Are you the American Idol? Yes, I am. The best undiscovered talent in America? The best. Are you sure? Yeah. The number one question I'm asked is, are the people we show on the show genuine? Why are you here? I'm here because I want to be a star, a superstar, that is. We ask them the question, are you a good singer? Yes. Are you the next American Idol? Why are you here, Roman? I'm here to become the next American Idol. Every single one believed they were the best singers in America. Best singer in America? Oh, yeah. Right. Fortunately or unfortunately, everyone you see really is genuine, and they will believe that they are the next American Idol. I believe I can do a lot for this country. I love selling music, and I love performing. Okay. Great. All right. Great. Why don't you give us... Give well, why don't you start with whatever song you want? As I look into your eyes, I tell you what I see. Girl, you're the one I'm going to keep in my dreams. I want to hold you close. Give you everything, girl, my let You know you're going to be wearing my diamond ring. I want to keep you in my heart. Show you what I mean. 
Girl, you're the one I be seeing in my dreams. You want to hear the chorus? No, I couldn't hear anymore. People love watching bad talent because they think, that's me too. I would never have the courage to do that, though. And, or maybe I'm bad, but I'm not that bad. When the rock gets red, black, go the birth in and gave through to the night. That our flag was still there. Oh, say the last our banner rock in red flare for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Play ball. I think we have something in all of us that rebels against anything serious. And we all tend to giggle at the wrong times. How can I put into words what I feel? My life was complete. I thought I was whole. Why do I feel like I'm losing control? Paula's pretty good at hiding it. She'll turn away sometimes, and you can guarantee that, even though we don't see it in the shot, Simon is nudging her or squeezing her knee or something. And that is so infectious that it makes the rest of us laugh along with it. How can it be that right here with me... I normally can keep a straight face in the auditions. The worst person is Randy, because his shoulders go, and once his shoulders go, I'm off. But you misread my meaning when I met you. <laughs> Closed the door and left me blind by the light. Oh. I try and stifle my laughter when I'm on this set, especially in those early auditions. You see me hold the paper up over my face, you know, I just look off, I just, I think about, you know, God, I think about my kids, you know, I, I try and hold my breath. I do everything I can, because you know, it's not really that nice to laugh in someone's face, but as you can tell, sometimes you just can't hold it. Oh, but losing everything is like the sun going down. On me. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. At least they've got the guts to actually stand there and do it. But you have to remember while we're there, we're there to find a talent that is going to be there in ten years' time. We're there to find a singer that can sing absolutely anything and is going to really and honestly be a huge star. And you, and you, and you, you're going to love me. Congratulations. Congratulations, my God. I've been waiting for that for the last four days. What I enjoy most about judging on Idol and being a part of it is that you actually discover some great young talent that would have never had a chance to make it. I was happy when Ruben won. I was happy when Clay was a runner-up. Happy when Kelly won. I'll be happy when somebody great wins this season. You tell me to leave. <laughs> My doctor said, take it easy, oh, but your loving is much too strong. I'm added to your chain, chain, chain. Before it used to be, how am I going to get a record deal? And now it's like, how am I ever going to make it? Unless I'm on a show like American Idol, I'll never make it. Whoever would have thought that that's what people would be saying. Well, I left a good job in the city. Working for the man every night and day But I never lost one minute of sleep Worry about the way things might have been Big wheel keep on turning Proud Mary keep on burning And we're rolling Thank you, Fantasia. This is not about video. It's not about the cutest person. It's not about the most handsome guy. It's about talent. Guess what that means? I'm going to Hollywood. You're going to Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. It's always great when someone is successful and we see just the excitement and the, the fact they can't believe it and, and the celebrations that they go on. It's great because we live, we live that, that success through them, really. Welcome to Hollywood! Yeah. Yeah.
I love to watch people celebrate and when they get through uh, the different stages of the competition. But I remember there was one girl in Pasadena who celebrated a little bit too quickly. Nine, six, three, step forward, please. Okay. Front row, you're going home. Back row, you're through to the next row. Yes, the celebrations when they get through. That's great for them, but kind of dangerous for me. Yeah, next season I'm telling you, I'm wearing shoulder pads and a face mask for protection. We got more phenomenal idol coming up through the eyes of our judges after the break. God, I love saying that. Welcome back to American Idol, the phenomenon. Now imagine for a second you're one of our judges. Your passion is music. Your goal is to find the best undiscovered talent in America. And what walks through the doors? This. I'm gonna shimmy till my garters break. <laughs> oh, 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 give my love, give my love, give my love, give my love, give my love. As a producer, you know, you, you think you've seen it all, but there's always somebody who comes and does something completely off the wall. Um, it amazes us, really. I mean, yeah. the extent that some people will go to to try and impress in an audition. They've come in dressed as wizards, as Christmas trees, as Klingons. We've seen it all. They've invaded the judges' space. Did you ask? Simon! And they've tried to seduce them. So good to see you! Simon had his fans. Come on, let's go. Oh, oh let's, let's, go. let's move back, Paula. Oh, oh, thank you very classic. much. classic. Thank you, Amnesia. Great. So did Paula. You are the apple of my eye. Oh. The contestants that come in in Florida just, I don't know what they're thinking. People are just trying anything. It just doesn't work. We are not there to get uh, flattery and love flattery. We're only there to see the best singer that we can find. You, you nice. can relax, shake it out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Randy. <laughs> Some people didn't want to impress anyone. Your name is Marquise McCray. Are you excited? <laughs> No. No. But some people are beyond understanding. When I came to America, I, honestly, I had no idea what to expect. Um, um, one of the first cities we went to was New York, and one of the first auditions I heard was a guy called Milk. Milk? Spelled M-Y-L-K? Whose audition piece was a Neil Diamond song interspersed with Vietnamese war footage. Rambo doing... Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond. I love that. And that's what he thought we were looking for in the next American Idol. All right, all right. <laughs> it was in the spring <laughs> that spring became the summer. <laughs> 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 Who'd have believed you'd come along? Ooh, duck! Oh! <laughs> Hands <laughs> reaching out, touching me! Touching you, <laughs> sweet Caroline. Good times, ne oh God, here it comes again. Good times <laughs> never seem so good. I am inclined, excuse me, to believe they never should, but then my mind, I. Yeah. Sweet Caroline. Oh, yes. Okay, listen, leave. listen. On, go. We gotta ask you to leave. Come on. Why? Come We're on, gonna, gonna take you to Hollywood right now. No, no, I don't. Come, come, come with us. Hollywood come, with us no. come with us to Hollywood. Come with us to Hollywood. 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 Hollyw
Just as some of our contestants surprised us with their behavior, a lot of them amazed us with their choice of songs. Silent night. I said a silent night. But American Idol isn't necessarily about peace to all men. Simon said I was a little boring. You're still boring. Boring? For me, the most important thing when you do this show is, is that if you give out criticism, you've got to be able to take it back. And, and I really do encourage everyone to say to me exactly what's on their mind. You know what I think? Boring is wearing all black. It's my personal opinion. Oh, my God. The confrontation is essential as part of the show. You can't just make it one-sided, me criticizing people. If someone gives it back, you've got to show that, and I've got to take it. So therefore, I guess the rumors must be true. You must be gay, then. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. oh, now we're getting started. Now. I think Simon lives on confrontation. Yeah, I think he's a confrontation junkie. Well, that's <laughs> that. I've had water thrown in my face. I've had just about every insult known to man. Simon, you. People threaten to beat me up with baseball bats, but that's part of the job, isn't it? You're fat. You're an. That's all I have to say. I'm gone. I am fat. One thing that's very important in the show is confrontation. Whether it's between the judges themselves, whether it's between the judges and the contestants, or even the contestants and the contestants, that is because it keeps the show honest. And for you to tell me that I need lessons? Tamika, Tamika. Tamika. Go, Tamika. It's go, Tamika. 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 Tamika, listen to Tamika. me. Tamika. Tamika. Not Tamika. 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 Go to an audition where they lie to you. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, no, I'm not about to go uh, to an audition go, where go, they go, lie go to me. Yeah, we're telling go you there. the truth and you don't want to hear it. Go there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Because y'all got props. That British judge that's on the end, he can go kiss my natural born black <laughs> for all I <laughs> care. Because he don't know diddly squat. And neither do that big fat black is sitting on the other side. He don't know either. And Paula Abdul is just jealous. As well as battling with the contestants, the judges fought with each other. Right. I think you should. Sorry. I'm still talking. Cause I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm a fan. Like Season one, I'm not going to deny the fact that Sam and I pretty much hated each other. It was painful to watch the show. I'd watch it like this. The first season, you saw us, like, you know, there were those hated kind of glares, like, yo, dude, you don't agree with me. In the last two episodes, two losers... Oh. Uh, no, hang on, let me finish. Come on, two, Simon, Let me Simon, finish. Simon. Randy got fed up with me one, uh, one evening. Guy was criticising some kid, and I was absolutely right. He suddenly took it very personally, Paula egging him on. Well, you can't call people losers. Yeah. Damn right. What are you doing? I can call them whatever I like. What? No, you can't. What? Yes, I can. What? No, you can't. Yes, what? I can. They are losers, and they do not deserve to be in this competition. But you don't have I'm to call you, them losers. No, I'm going to tell you something. Being cavalier... You don't have to call them losers. Being cavalier in, in judging effort... America is about celebrating the effort of... Oh, exactly. don't give me that American it's rubbish, true. Paula. Simon, come it's on, true, Simon. That Simon. is come on, rubbish. Come on. He's just having a tough day. He hasn't no, I'm not having a tough day. He hasn't been held much when he was a child, and he needs it well, now. Well, let me tell you something, Paul. If he keeps insulting people like that, he's going to have a tougher day. Go and take a happy <laughs> pill, and we'll deal with this later. Yeah, hey, come on. You want to do something about it? Yeah, we'll come discuss on, come on, Randy, come on, Randy, come on. we'll discuss this come on, later. Come on, come on, I almost got beaten up by Randy Jackson, or even worse, he was going to fall on me. Quite a few of us on occasions want to hit Simon, uh, but it did get out of control, and... and they needed to be spoken to. I hate to admit it, but I actually couldn't imagine doing the show without Paul or Randy now. And if this ever gets broadcast, I'll kill you. Coming up, the judges' hard work pays off as Kelly and Ruben make their own way to the top of American Idol. At the core of American Idol, the goal is to search the United States to find the raw, undiscovered talent that could become the next pop superstar. Now, in each season, along the way, there are always those magical moments that happen up on the Idol stage. There's always moments in the series when something magic happens, when you just think, oh, this is special, this is, this is fabulous. Uh, for me, the series, there were, there were two, really. The first one was when LaToya sang all by myself and she hit that high note and everybody went, wow, who is this kid?
And of course, the second one was Fantasia singing Summertime, which was just fabulous. There are always a number of artists that actually, even though they don't win, you know they've got something special and, they, and you know they're going to be around for a, for a, for a long time. Um, I remember in series one, Tamara singing, A House Is Not A Home. And she just brought the house down. But obviously, the star of season one was Kelly Clarkson. I remember my very first audition. A group of ten girls, and I was the tenth one. All nine girls came out crying. And I was like, oh, God. I was like, I'm going to go in there, and he's just going to yell at me. Okay, whatever. At last, my love has come along. My lonely days are over And life is like a song Oh, at last The skies above are blue And here we are in heaven I'm so glad and I was, you know, kind of showing off my personality a bit and ended up switching places with Randy somehow. Should, should I, I mean, you... Look, I'll take your place. You, you, no, 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 no. you sit down, you sit down. Okay. And he ended up auditioning for me, Paula, and Simon. I thought it was really cool because I was sitting next to Paula. And they liked it. They all were like... I mean, I was so happy because the British man didn't make me cry. Uh, Randy, yes or no to Hollywood? Yes. Paula. I definitely think you should come to Hollywood. Score! Okay, but you're through to Hollywood. <laughs> All right, welcome to Hollywood. Really? <laughs> well, how about Good us? Job. Good I was, job. Oh, we were a little before. Were... I was a little before. No, but you're famous now. So yeah, see? Yeah. So when we got the call back from my Dallas audition, we all went to Pasadena. I know Randy remembered me. And Paula had, you know, kind of remembered me. But Simon definitely was like, I don't remember you, but you're good. I kept you all this time. But I think you probably would have waited this long to hear the news that you got through to the next oh! round. He's always been supportive, but he had a really hard time remembering me. <laughs> so I guess I was a little plain Jane for Simon. <laughs> Kelly went into the top ten and each week gave performances that America just could not forget. sure even during American Idol that I wanted to do this as my career for certain there's a lot of sacrifices in this business not only for me but for my family and friends and I was singing natural woman on stage and I was looking at the crowd and it was just so cool to see all the little girls and you know to be an idol for them it's priceless While I'm singing that song, I, I really wanted to do it, and it was worth it. Within one hour, you'll know who your idol is. I remember the finale. I was completely exhausted, <laughs> as well as Justin was. And, you know, I had no clue who was going to win. I mean, he's a very cute guy. And a lot of girls watch the show, so I figured, OK, so the guy is definitely going to win. The winner of American Idol 2002 is... <laughs> Kelly Clarkson.
And they ended up calling my name and I was completely floored. There were so many things going through my head. A moment like this, some people wait a lifetime. For a moment like this, some people search forever. For that one special kiss, oh, I can't believe it. And I cried on national television, which I regret to this day. <laughs> but that's okay. I think Kelly singing a moment like this encapsulated an entire season in one song. It was the quintessential moment of season one. I think everyone in the theatre had goosebumps at that moment. And without question, it set the bar for every season after that. Coming up, a teacher from North Carolina and Mr. 205 from Birmingham, Alabama. In season two, we hit the road in search of the next American Idol. And in each city, we were met by thousands and thousands of singers who felt they were the next pop star we were looking for. Little did anyone know then that the top two would be two very different contestants, a teacher from North Carolina and Mr. 205 from Birmingham, Alabama. Looking back on Clay Aiken walking into his first audition, you couldn't have judged him in any way, shape, or form. I mean, this guy had ears that stood out like satellite dishes either side of his head. OK, why are you here? I'm the American Idol. Did you see the first show? I did. And what were your thoughts? Um, I thought I, you had some good talent. You had some good talent. But I think uh, as far as the top ten goes, I could have been up there. Could have got the number one, number two at least. Really? Yeah. Mm. It would be fair to say that uh, Clay is a, is a perfect representation of the adage, don't judge a book by its cover. Take time to tell me you really care. And we'll share tomorrow together. Baby, I'll always love you forever. And we went, well, it's a good voice. It's not a pop star's voice. But what happened week after week was that America started to accept this character. <laughs> not just because he was changing his look, but because that voice was superb. Softly you whisper, you're so sincere. How could I? Yes, yeah, sure, he started flat ironing his hair and everything else. But when he sang, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, you knew you were standing in front of a star. Clay had studied everything. Clay knew when he should sing, what he should sing. I gotta give you props. I gotta stand up yeah. for you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right Thank song you. for the right guy, did your thing, came back, did your homework. I love that. Thank you very That's much. That's what this is about. We hope people come back and do the work. And I still say, where's that voice coming from? With Ruben, when he turned up, he'd never planned on it. He was there with his friend. He'd never even watched the show. There's a ribbon in the sky for our love if allowed may I touch your hand no one was more surprised uh, than he was when he got through it was the one thing he was seriously not expecting Ooh, and don't that. mess with me Ruben <laughs> after I made the Hollywood I was just like you know this might be something so and, and, at that, and even at that point, I didn't, you know, I wasn't really focused on winning the show. I was just focused on, you know, getting the exposure, trying to make it to the top 30. Top 30! He worked really hard. He learned his songs. Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? You said you'd be coming back this way. changed his style for each genre of music that we did. How can you love a broken heart? How can you 
stop the rain from falling down. Tell me and Ruben officially took over the 205. When they made it through to the final 12, Clay and Ruben, they started to, to accumulate a fan base. Each week, you'd find that uh, people just voted for them in their millions. I'm crying because I love Clay so much. It'd be fair to say that through, through the competition, Clay was, was slightly ahead and then, the, then, the, then it would change. Um, and, and, you know, we thought at the end that Clay might well take it. Well, tonight, we are going to reveal the next American Idol. I, I was really happy just to see how far two kids from the South had come, you know. And it was, it was just, it was great to see both sets of our parents and you know how happy they were about the things that we had accomplished. After 24 million votes, the winner of American Idol 2003 is Ruben Studdard. Ruben wasn't your typical American Idol. Everyone related to that. He was cuddly. He had the smile of an angel, little dimples. He was just somebody that you felt you could hang out with. And he was a nice guy. That was Ruben. What you saw, you got. And it's the flying I think American Idol gives people hope. It, it just gives some people a chance that may not in the regular recording industry have had a chance to become the star that they always wanted to be. You know, I really attribute uh, American Idol to giving people a chance that, that wouldn't always get a chance, but, you know, sees the star in everybody and, you know, tries to pull out the best in people professionally and um, just personally. Coming up, almost a year ago, they lived normal teenage lives. Then they auditioned for American Idol 3 and began an unbelievable journey to the final two. Welcome back. Now, we're almost there. Just a couple of nights, Tuesday, this place, this theater buzzing with energy. People screaming for Fantasia, cheering on Diana. But who is going to win? That's anybody's guess. They may be opponents, but they're not quite as opposite as you may think. Both are June babies. Both started singing at the age of five. Both are small town girls with big, big followings. Fantasia has a, a, a throat that was kissed by God. I love Diana DeCarmo. She's so cute. Take a look. America, you've chosen these two, Diana. They both came from group one. And they've both done their time in the bottom three. The hometown girls are now national celebrities and stars in their own right. Their lives have changed forever thanks to your votes. But who are you going to get behind on the big night? Fantasia is going to win it this season, am I right? I think it's going to be Fantasia. I think Diana's going to win. Fantasia. Diana's going to win. Fantasia is fantastic. She's amazing. There's a star in that girl. The journey for me has been crazy. Out of 70,000 people, here I am. I made it to the top two. I started at the bottom, you know, and I've, I've kind of worked my way up the food chain, as you might say, but it's, it's been amazing. I have said all along that you are too young for this competition. I'm going to take that back up. <laughs> Simon told me that he took back all the things that he had said. It was definitely a big personal victory. <laughs> I came in the competition just being me, just being real crazy loud, you know, just being me, and people actually liked it. He brought me to tears. I don't know what to say. He just did. <laughs> From the Georgia Dome, out of three auditions, it's kind of cool. It's amazing to think how far I've come that little me, you know, from Snowville has come this far. So far, the performance of the night. <laughs> So there you have it. The phenomenon continues with our biggest finale yet. Now, I know I don't need to remind you to watch, but I do want to ask you to vote. I'll see you on Tuesday night. Until then, Seacrest, out. Out.